We're going to look now at uh, the motion of particles that are charged and that are moving through uh, electric fields. We're going to just do uniform electric fields uh, because you don't have the math ability to do non-uniform electric fields. If the field is uniform, that's going to mean that there's a constant force and therefore a constant acceleration on the particle. So we're combining what we did at the beginning of physics with constant acceleration motion and those kinematics uh, things that we talked about with uh, some of these ideas from the new topic about force and charge and electric field. So basic uh, setup for this is we use the electric field strength and direction and figure out the magnitude and uh, direction of the force from that. Um, then we use the force and the mass of the object to find the acceleration. And then we use the kinematics equations to figure out any other quantities uh, within the, the motion framework that we might be asked to find. So, one place where we might be interested in doing this would be inside a, uh, a CRT television, a cathode ray tube television or other display. Um, we have, uh, there's, there's a little they call it an electron gun, and it does exactly what you would expect. It fires electrons. It fires electrons at the screen to make it light up. And it has to aim those electrons to hit different parts of the screen. So it uses a device that looks something like this. It's big plates. Actually, it's, it's coils of wire instead of plates. But um, these, these things that are generating electric and actually magnetic fields. We'll get to magnetic fields later on. Um, to, uh, to curve the electrons as they're um, flying toward the screen so that they hit the right place. So let's look at uh, an example of that, just a nice simple one where we use the, the parallel plate capacitor with a uniform electric field inside. Um, and we want to know just the minimum speed this electron has to be going at when it enters this electric field just to avoid hitting either of the, the plates here. Um, so so basically we're going to look at uh, how, how fast does it have to go to miss this edge or this edge right here. First off, we need to think about which edge is it that we're worried about. Well, if we have an electron, electrons are negatively charged. And so the force on an electron would be opposite the direction of the electric field. Remember, electric field shows the force that would act on a small positive test charge. So we want our electron, uh, our electron then is going to feel a force downward, and so it's going to curve downward, and so we want it to have a path that looks something like this. So it just misses this edge right here. Okay, so this curved path down toward the bottom plate uh, problem we looks pretty familiar. It looks just like uh, projectile motion, except the acceleration toward this plate is not going to be the acceleration of gravity, but rather the acceleration caused by this electric field. So, what do we know here? We've got the electric field given to us. We've got this distance and these two distances. It turns out that we're not going to care about that distance. That would only be relevant if this were a positive particle. Um, we also know that it's an electron. So for electrons, the mass is uh, on your uh, list of constants, 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. The charge is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So let's do a little bit of work with this. First off, We'll figure out the force that's acting on this electron while it's in this field. So the force is going to be equal to the charge times the electric field. Remember, electric field is just force per charge. So our charge is a negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And the electric field was given as... 15,000 newtons per coulomb, and that's upward, so we'll make that a positive. It's per coulomb. And so we get our force from the electric field, then, is going to be 2.4 times 10 to the negative 15th newtons. 
Alright, now that we've got the force, we can use that to find the acceleration. So acceleration is going to be the force divided by the mass. It's really the net force divided by the mass, but since we're not told anything about other forces here, we can assume this is the only force that's acting on the, uh, uh, on the electron. So that'll be that 2.4 times 10 to the negative 15th newtons divided by the mass of the electron, and that was 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. And that gives us 2.6 times 10 to the 15th meters per second squared. That is a big acceleration, but we expect a big acceleration here because it's an electron that we're applying this force to. Even though it's a really tiny force, it's a way, way, way tiny mass. So the acceleration is going to be very, very large. All right, now that acceleration is acceleration in the y direction, and uh, that's going to be in the, let's see, I missed a sign here, negative 2.4, negative 2.4, and negative 2.6 now for acceleration. Uh, so that's going to be in the y direction, the up and down direction here. There's no component of the electric field in the x direction, so acceleration in the x will be a zero. That'll look familiar to you from projectiles as well. Um, just a coincidence that it works out like that here, but it's nice that it's familiar for us. Uh, so it might be useful to you to write out this table of given information that we've worked with so many times. Um, it's the initial position, final position, the uh, initial speed, final speed, the acceleration, and the time are all values that are going to be useful for us here. Okay, acceleration in the x, we said it was zero. And the y is that negative 2.6 times 10 to the 15th meters per second squared. The initial position in the x we'll just call 0. And the final position, we want it to just pass by this point right here. So we'll make that 0 0.015 meters. In the y direction, it starts at some position 0 0.005 meters above that spot. And we want it to end at zero. Actually, just minutely more than zero, but we'll just call it zero for this. Uh, initial velocity in the y direction is going to be zero. It's just traveling to the right at the beginning. And we want to know what the initial velocity in the x direction is here. So, we'll use the y direction information first to get time, and then we can use that to get initial velocity. So, in the y direction, we use the equation y equals y naught plus v naught t in the y direction plus one half times acceleration in the y times t squared. This term goes to zero. Uh, let's see, y is going to be zero equals 0 0.005 meters plus one half times negative 2.6 times 10 to the 15th meters per second squared times t squared and when we solve for t so we'll subtract the 0 0.005 from both sides multiply by 2 divide by negative 2.6 times 10 to the 15th and then take the square root and we'll get our time equal to 1.96 times 10 to the negative ninth seconds. And then with that information, we can figure out, uh, okay, we know how far in the x direction it has to go, how much time it has to do it, and the fact that it's going to be traveling at a constant speed in the x direction, because acceleration is zero. So now just velocity in the x is going to be equal to that point 0 0.015 meters divided by the 1.96 times 10 to the negative ninth seconds 
which gives us a velocity of 7.6 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. All right, now this seem, may seem like a really, really unrealistically huge speed for a, um, a particle to be traveling at, but it turns out that for an electron in a cathode ray tube television set, this is actually not unreasonable at all. If it's unreasonable, it's probably because it's a little bit too small. Uh, but uh, these things, they move extremely fast, which also makes sense with uh, the idea that we can have so many pictures flashing on the screen at once that we can't even tell it's a series of pictures. It looks like one continuous video. So the whole operation has to be extremely fast, including the speed to get uh, these electrons um, passed. But here, that's just the minimum speed so it doesn't hit the plate. And then if we want to just bend it a little bit instead of bending it as much as possible, of course we'd have to have this thing going even faster or adjust the electric field uh, to compensate for that.